Good morning, friends. It's what time of year? We might get some snow this week. I hear rumors. And our friend Olaf is here to say Merry Christmas, just around the corner, days away. And I'm here to say Merry, Merry Christmas. And I have a couple of Christmas stories for you. And Olaf is here to listen to, and I hope you like them. So here we go. Our first story is a new story, and it comes from a place Miss Patty used to live in um, Vermont for a little while. And this story is from a family who have a farm in Vermont. And it's a lovely story. So, The Christmas Barn by John and Jennifer Churchman. I think you will like the pictures. The Christmas Barn. The sheepdogs watched out the farmhouse window as the rain came down. The autumn storm was fierce. It tossed the colorful leaves around and the trees bent low in the wind. Crack! In the forest, a tree fell to the ground. The next morning after the storm had passed, Farmer John went to look for the fallen tree with Laddie and Maisie. He found the old pine tree lying on the forest floor. It had been the tallest tree on Moonrise Farm for over 150 years. Now it was gone. Hmm, he thought, maybe the tree can have another life. Maybe we can make a special Christmas gift for the animals. That night, Farmer John and his wife Farmer Jennifer drew up the plans. Over the next few days, Farmer John turned the old pine tree into logs. He then rolled the logs into a big pile with his tractor. He studied the plans for the animal's gift. There was a lot of work to do before Christmas. Joy the alpaca stopped to watch as he worked. She moved slowly. Her belly was big and round. Mm. James the Sawyer milled the logs into boards. Whirr, whirr, risp, rasp went the sawmill. The chickens, ducks, turkeys, and geese came running, curious to see what was going on. What is this? Cluck, cluck, what is that? Quack, quack. Look at all the animals. <laughs> Early the next morning, Farmer John started building the special Christmas gift for the animals. First, he cleared a space in the woods, right where the old pine tree had fallen. Then he marked where the walls would go with ribbon and stakes. Mo, the farm cat, sat on the old stump watching curiously. The sound of Farmer John's hammer rang out through the forest. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Finn and Sweet Pea the sheep watched through the pasture fence as he worked. They looked at each other and back again. What can it be? What can it be? Farmer John worked every day for many weeks as the weather turned colder and colder. Brrr, went the drill as he made the walls and a roof. He looked up at the sky. Winter will be here any day now, he said. I'll have to hurry. 
the alpacas picked their way through the trees to see what Farmer John was doing. Joy put her nose in the air. Sniff, sniff, snuffle, snuffle. Something smelled different in the forest. <laughs> Farmer John was almost finished with the frame. Snow's coming, he said to himself. He could see his breath in the chilly air. Meadow the lamb wandered up to see what he was doing. She gave a soft baa when she saw him. Don't worry, little one, he said. I'm making something to keep you warm all winter. As he turned back to his work, Farmer John heard crunch, crunch, crunch of leaves. Someone was coming up the path. It was Farmer Richard with a box full of tools. Could I lend a hand? Called the old friend. Why, yes, said Farmer John, and together they made the doors and windows and a beautiful cupola for the roof that afternoon. That's that decoration at, at the very top. All the next day, Farmer John painted, splat, swish, splat, swish went his brush with the dark red paint. The highland cows swung their horns this way and that to stay warm, murmuring to each other in gentle moos as they watched him work. It would snow soon, he thought. No time to waste. The sheep watched as the first snowflakes fell onto their thick woolly coats. The alpacas huddled around Joy to keep her warm, their feet getting frosty on the snow-covered ground. That afternoon, as the snow grew deeper, Farmer John spent his time Inside the building, pens and feeders. He then decorated the gates with balsam garlands and also added something special to the hayloft window. It's looking amazing. Early the next morning, Farmer John heard a truck rumble, rumble, rumble up the lane. It was his friend, Farmer Roger, bringing a load of hay to fill the loft. Sa Sadie the pony looked over the fence. Hey, sweet hay. The sheepdogs watched thoughtfully from the hillside as the snow started again, falling gently all around them. Farmer John worked all day and into the night, for tomorrow was Christmas Eve. When the sun rose the next morning over the snow-covered farm, the special gift for the animals was done. A barn, a barn for Christmas, made from the wood of the old pine tree. Farmer John and Farmer Jennifer couldn't wait to show the animals their new home. They brought everyone in from the snowy pasture, gave them fresh hay, and took them their, to their soft beds. Joy the alpaca was the last to come in. Farmer John had made a special place for her right by the window. What a sweet face little Joy has, huh? That evening, as the animals were settling in, they heard the jingle of bells. The alpacas and sheep looked up from their hay. 
and the chickens scurried toward the barn door. It was their neighbor, Farmer Marriott, with her donkeys. They carried a basket of pumpkins, apples, and corn. Is that for us? Thank you for the wonderful gift, said Farmer John. The donkeys replied with a loud hee-haw, but Farmer Marriott just smiled with a twinkle in her eye. What do you think? Maybe that's what her bells sounded like? <laughs> A full moon rose high in the sky that night, rare for Christmas Eve, inside the warm barn. Joy gave birth to a little cry -a. The animals gathered around to welcome the baby alpaca to the farm. That's pretty special. I think we'll call her Hope, whispered Farmer John. Is that the sweetest little face? Oh. Farmer John walked outside. It was peaceful and the snow sparkled in the moonlight. He set his hand on the stump of the old pine tree. You have a new life now. You've become a very fine barn, he said. A Christmas barn for everyone. He smiled and spoke softly to the animals, safe and snug in their new home. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. It's a beautiful barn. And this is John and Jennifer and their real barn and how they celebrate Christmas on Moonrise Farm. And sometime you could check this wonderful book out and read it at home. I like that story. I hope you did too. So my next story is one I know you've heard before. But I couldn't resist because it's such a lovely version. So, this is the classic, The Night Before Christmas. And when I was little, which was kind of a long time ago, I, my mom and dad read this to us as well, a different version, but the same story. So this is by, originally, Clement Moore wrote this story, and this is illustrated by Charles Santori. Are you ready? The Night Before Christmas, and in just a few days, it will be The Night Before Christmas for you. was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Do you have a special stocking? The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. I guess that's a special candy. Maybe you have a favorite candy at Christmas or cookie. And mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. A 
away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Let's see what he sees. Oh, amazing. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Have you ever seen when the moon is so bright? It almost seems like daytime. But look, what is here? What does he see? It's Santa and his reindeer. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. a big old moon. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves set before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers, they flew with the sleigh full of Ways. And St. Nicholas, too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump and a right jolly old elf and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself.
A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He does look like a merry fellow. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying a finger on the side of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Can you say that? Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. That's a wonderful classic story. So I hope you have a fabulous Christmas and I hope maybe we get a little bit of snow and that you can play in it and get out your mittens and your hat and winter clothes. Maybe even make a snowman if we get enough. So Merry Christmas and see you soon at the library.